Hello and welcome to some Be Open here. We are at The Rock, Rockingham Speedway here in North Carolina. It is North Carolina, right? Not South? Yes. Okay. Let me just... I doubt myself whenever I'm on camera or I guess on mic saying stupid things that might not be true. But yes, we are in North Carolina and uh, I'm hopping in here for qualifying with... An old OSR setup um, with some Q-tape on it that I put on there uh, because apparently OSR in the month that I was gone has gone to a pay model for NASCAR stuff which is a bummer but uh, <laughs> hey I guess that just means that I can't be a freeloader anymore <laughs> which is probably for my own good um, so I guess what I'm gonna have to do from now on is not spinning one and two, first of all. Uh, from now on, is kind of start to learn how to adjust things myself and uh, use these old setups as a baseline, which, you know, not a bad baseline to use. So if uh, I need the car a little oh, bit different, uh, I can adjust it. P2, that puts you 0.1 off the pace. Well, that was at 3.6. And uh, I can learn how to do that a little bit better. I think I should have taken one and two a little more aggressive right there. The car ahead has just done a 23.5. There, I'll be aggressive in three and four instead. And then come all the way down here. Alright, that's a best lap for me. I'm flag, content with that. Oh. Feels like we had a, a little more grip than we did in the practice session I was in. Uh, again, not an actual qualifying setup here. But uh, just the old OSR set up with Q-tape on it. Seems like uh did okay. I can live with that right now. P2. Hopefully P3 eventually or lower. But I guess we'll deal with P2 if we have to. Uh, yeah, so I just uh, I can't be a freeloader living on OSR's couch anymore. I guess. And uh, like I said, that's probably for my own good. Um... I didn't really have too much time before this race to think about making adjustments and everything because I had just learned when I went to go get the OSR setup that uh, I couldn't unless I wanted to pay money and I don't really want to be paying money <laughs> so hey uh, why didn't I set this lap as a little slower no, it wasn't. That was my best lap. 488. Man, I did that on, like, lap, what, 5? Why couldn't I do that right from the start? That would have been a pull time. Oh, well. We'll uh, do a practice pit in here. I say, picking it the last minute to do so. I'm spinning. Uh, I'm actually kind of happy with how the car is feeling. It's got a lot of rotation. Maybe a little bit too much, but I'm happy with how it feels, and I would like it to have a little more rotation rather than less. Especially at a place like Rockingham, where you can really kill that right front. In fact, right here it's showing the right rear got worn. So we'll see how it goes. It's not feeling too bad. This old setup from... I don't know when. A little while ago. It was made for 105 track temp, and the temperature out here is 83. So, uh, that would lead me to believe that it's gonna be tight is that how that works because if it was meant for a really hot track then they tightened it up so you're not sliding it so it'd be matching the track temp and if it's cooler and you got more grip then that means it would rip the tires off I think that's how that works so theoretically it should be tighter but honestly when driving it it was feeling uh, kind of loose but We'll see what happens. Uh, make sure okay. I get the right All tape on it now. 110 the laps here at Rockingham. A very fun track. Love Rockingham. It's kind of slowly become one of my favorite places to visit. Um, really fun trying to hit fast laps around here. And, of course, the uh, tire wear really matters, so you got to be smart about how you do that. Uh, in fact, I moved my brake bias to 60. Um, very dangerous on the cold tires, though, so I'm going to have to watch out for that. Uh, this is a single split late night race. Uh, the number two here, starting in seventh. I am the number one car, unfortunately. And uh, we got a range from me at 5.6k I rating to the guy uh, who started one spot behind me there at 500. So really great lap from that guy. 
um, despite his 500 I rating. So good luck to him. This could be a great I rating haul for the guy. One to go. Next time by. Looking like 85-ish laps of fuel estimated. I don't think we would ever be able to stretch that. As you see, our strength field 1894. Good year. I don't know. I don't know what happened that year. Don't take that out of context. I'm just making a joke. Um, <laughs> so I uh, I doubt we'd be able to stretch it that much. That'd be a lot of laps. But uh, we got some room to breathe if we didn't want to pit right at halfway. But I'm guessing we'll probably get some yellows with a single split. Lots of uh, sub-1000 guys in here, like the uh, the guy starting fourth, I think, is also... He's 900 I rating. And uh, clearly they're fast if they qualified all the way up here. There so, don't want to underestimate them. The Have a good ride. We've got the 10 who uh, beat us out for in uh, qualifying with the only .4 in Ten the field. Laps. And of course I've got to start on the outside front row, unfortunately, but we'll, uh, we'll deal with it, as I always do. We get ourselves a nice start. Follow the pace car in the outside column. <laughs> what gear are we going to want to be in? Sometimes it's first gear here at Rockingham. Hmm. Might be first gear. Yeah, I think it might be first gear on the front row. I think if I were back a little farther, I might go second gear, but I think at least on these fresh tires, I might want uh, first gear to get the launch. Uh, can't wait to regret that decision. But so long as we survive it, we can at least know for future restarts, which I'm sure we will have. I doubt it'll be a caution free race. But here's hoping. Lots of fun when you get the long runs here at Rockingham. See the guy. Here we go. Hey, Gary's in. Green, green, green. Pit road's open. We actually got a pretty great jump. Inside. Very careful on these cold tires. Yeah. Be very careful how much I turn the steering wheel. Oh wow, okay, I underdrove that apparently because he came flying up. Oh wow, he is going for it. Jesus, man. That's a literal slide job, just sliding through the corner. I don't want to fight that hard this early. Now he's sliding in front of me? What are you doing, man? Take it easy, my brother. It is a triple-digit race lap count. Lap count race? Words in whatever order I want to put them in? Wait, he's drifting through one and two. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm going to take it a little easier than that, and I'm going to use my brakes to get down to the bottom. Not rev it up too much. Okay, Colton, as a car exits in the pits, heads up. Like I saw him, like he you saw how much he gained on me through four. I think I underdrove it, but he's also he lighting up those rear tires, and you can tell they're unhappy. He slides through just, uh, one and two again. Time was the open race format here, I'm gonna be a little more patient with uh, my car and my tires. All right, so we're okay. We're actually green so far. I saw a guy come out of the pits. I don't know if you decided to start on pit road or if there was some sort of issue back there, but we are green regardless, which is cool. I was kind of expecting an immediate yellow, to be honest. But the single split holding together real well here, like a well-applied duct tape. 
don't know if that's a, a good analogy, but we're running with it. Yeah, this guy's really lighting up his rear tires. Those things are just going to get hotter and hotter the more he does that. And it's not going to want to behave through the corners. I'm really not pushing at all, and he looks like he's having a, himself a handful. Someone pitting in. I don't know if they got a penalty or something, or just maybe just accidentally pressed the button. You've just done a 23.9. Okay, Colton. Times are pretty consistent. I don't want to lean on the right front too much. I'm going to try to remember to use a little bit of throttle on the exits. Not overdo it, but uh, not... Uh, just let the car lean on the right front either. It's kind of tough to get that balance, but yeah, man, he is. Maybe it's a prediction code thing, but it really looks like he's drifting it through one and two just about every lap. I'm gonna try to get a run on him here. Leaves the top open. I think I would prefer to try to pass him up here anyway. Still there. Clear inside. There we go. Let's get that done. Back to the bottom. Where I think the tire wear will be less impactful. Using those brakes to get the turn the turn in. Okay, you are the leader. Rockingham's kind of cool when it comes to tire saving because it feels like if you uh, really focus on using your pedals to get around the corners, you can almost like just keep your wheel straight, it feels like. Do the turn in with the brakes, like here. Kind of pull the car to the left while keeping the wheel straight. And then when you get to the exit, it almost seems like using the throttle to get the car turning. Obviously, you have to use the wheel a little bit, but uh, it can be a great place to kind of practice that good habit of trying to turn with things other than the steering wheel. I guess it's that big banking here that allows you to do that more. Your last lap time was at 24.3. And uh, hopefully this will translate into some good long run. Already looking better than uh, the 10, since he kind of abused us tires early on it looked like. Not sure how we're gonna fare compared to for example the five and the two back there. But we do have some uh, ground on them right now which is good news. And we'll see how our uh, car changes over time as well. We got a long way to go here. You're in the lead. In the lead. We got some Laps led. That's always nice. Not too competitive of a field here, but uh, I kind of wanted that. Having uh, been away for so long, I didn't really want to jump into like, <laughs> like one of those six thousand I rating fields like I was in not too long ago. I think that was at Old Atlanta in this car. We had the freaking six thousand strength of field race. That was insane. Where you have to be like perfect or else you'll like run into the car on your inside or outside just because uh, everybody's so close together you don't let me hit the wall so, kind of nice to have a little bit of open track in front of me got some green laps which is awesome just uh, kind of getting back into the groove of things it is Sunday night right now as I'm recording this and tomorrow is Monday so some new tracks for the week I hope to uh, participate, unless I get busy um, unexpectedly, but I hope to participate in some of the early races of the week, which will probably be real competitive. So, glad I'm getting a little bit of a calmer experience first. At least for now, I'm sure this could easily get wild later if uh, I'm not saving my tires as well as I think I am or uh, if we inevitably get a yellow flag. Yeah, 
be really cool to get some green flag pit stops at Rockingham, though. Rockingham's interesting because sometimes you get real wreck fests here, but sometimes you get surprisingly clean races, even when you might not expect it. I guess because guys are really struggling to race the track, because it can be pretty tough here. So they're not uh, doing too many crazy moves, just trying to make it around the track safely. Maybe that helps out with clean racing. Plus, uh, maybe people get spread out a little bit more. And it's hard to run into somebody if they are 10 car lengths away. Although I've seen some dive bombs where people have managed to do it. <laughs> That's typically like road racing stuff. <laughs> Hopefully not getting that here. So we do have some lap traffic coming up. I want to be very careful as I uh, get around them. Shouldn't be too bad if uh, I have to adjust my line a little bit. So you can run a couple different places here at Rockingham. It's looking like Thank he's man. content to stay on the bottom, so I might have to just try to get around his outside. Clear. He seemed to be indicating he was intending to stay low, so get around him just fine. No trouble there. We'll run the faster but maybe worse on the tires line for one corner. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, hopefully the 13 doesn't hurt me. He looks like he's trying to do something. Not sure what it is, but it's something. Let me just get around that as quick as I can. I was about two tenths slowing down, seeing what he was up to. That's okay. We got some time to spare. Again, not a hugely competitive field, but the setup, this old uh, OSR setup's feeling just fine. Getting the job done. I was talking in uh, Nick Nieben's Discord for a minute because I uh, I noticed that OSR was paid now and I'm like oh I guess this happened while I was gone and that's a bummer and uh, Nick mentioned that uh, he still has a bunch of his old OSR ones and they seem to be just fine because they don't change too much over time like the setup requirements and needs and things. And I was like, hey, I guess I guess I have a pretty good collection myself from racing OSR for a long time. So I guess I can just pull some of those from the archives. The car got tight there. Pull some of those from the archives and use those as a, a base for any time I might need to try uh, making some adjustments myself. And that will probably be a good way to start with learning stuff. Thanks, Robert. I've said before, like, man, I want to start yeah, no learning way. to make adjustments and everything. But I've always just had uh, OSR to fall back on, so without it, I think rather than trying to find another reliable, consistent source of free setups, maybe I just uh, actually do it this time and start making adjustments myself. It's just daunting, because you've got uh, people that have done it for a lot longer and really know how to get the most out of their car and know exactly, like, oh yeah, this feeling I'm having right here on the entry of the corner, I need to change the, the whittle bar and the doohickey lever, and uh, that'll make it turn. So I gotta learn what those things are and translate it to English and maybe not uh, have to fall rely on setups and stuff. Car's not doing too good right now. I think I might have overdone it just a little bit. It's on the exits right now. It's starting to feel a little bit tight. I think maybe if I could take a higher entry and then cut down, maybe I can uh, hang on to it a little bit better. Still got a gap behind us, but I can see that going away if we continue falling off. 
and if those guys behind have done a better job of saving their stuff. I like that. I can't believe that we're uh, about to be 31 laps into this green. I was not expecting that. Thank you. I, uh, I practiced green flag pit stops, but I didn't think I was going to need to use it. Keep it on. All right, Colton, the pit window is now open. Definitely going to go a little longer, because I don't want to be caught by a, uh, a really poorly timed caution or anything. Thank you. The gap to labor behind is now 3.1. But how, how long do we go? I mean, we're going to be losing time when we do that. Although it looks like we're actually still gaining on P2 right now, despite uh, my car feeling a little bit tighter at the moment. The new line I kind of adjusted to has done a great job of uh, mitigating that tightness. I think I just can't exit quite as low anymore. So we're doing okay. And I gotta make sure I get it slowed down, keep it on the brakes long enough. I don't even mind that I'm not racing side by side with anyone right now, because Rockingham's just fun to do laps around. We have the 11 car coming up, he's P12, we're gonna have to get around. Didn't have too much trouble with the last guy, so hopefully the same story here. We'll see where he's running and find our way around him safely, hopefully. Got the three in second place now, so I'm going to have to see how his gap is uh, adjusting compared to mine. See if he's catching us. Apparently caught the five, so he theoretically has a little bit better tires than he did. You've just done a twenty-five point two. This guy looks like he's struggling to turn, so I might want to try to cut below him, or he's just gonna let me go. All right, thank you, man. That was very cool of him. He'll uh, lose some time just to let us by safely. That's cool of him to do. I appreciate him for that. Come on, dude. Uh oh. Is this a yellow? I see smoke. This is why I plan on going long. No yellow there, but something clearly happened. And that freeze actually catched me pretty quick. I've been noticing I'm gaining a couple tenths at a time. Oh my goodness. That's a little scary. Time was at 25.2. Lap times are pretty consistent. Lamar is getting closer. The gap is now 2.1. Yeah, wow, he's uh, the guy behind's really turned it on. He must have been going real easy on the tires early. Now it's starting to help him out. I've kind of tried to pick up the pace a little bit, run this higher line. Plus, with a dynamic track, maybe if uh, less guys are using the higher line, maybe we got some cooler track up there helping us as well. Hard to say. Can't really. I haven't really been able to see where guys are running generally. It seems to be working, so we'll keep going at it. 
he's giving us the outside. Inside. Clear. Very nice. Okay. Yeah, ten four. Car actually feels okay. It's tighter right now, but um, we're run able to run that higher line just fine. It's maybe a little bit looser once we get around to the exits of the corners. Nothing undrivable by any means. That behind has uh, had to pass some lap cars, I think, so maybe that has stalled his progress just a bit. He's still back there, though. About 1.7 at the moment. Closer to halfway, just completed 45 of our 110. Yeah, now he's still catching us. Even with running this higher line. So I probably pushed just a little bit too much early. do we pit? We really don't want to pit right at halfway for the reasons I stated before, but he could really make up a lot of time on us if he does, and then we go uh, caution free. there a little bit hot got a little bit uh, light on me that's always a bit of a scary feeling I gotta watch out for that sure I'm easing into the corners enough you can see him back there I see a little red dot in my rear view that lap was at 25.3 wonder if he's gonna... Hmm. Do we fight him if he starts trying to pass? It's kind of me and him right now, I think. If I were to fight him, I would... He might have trouble passing if I'm running the outside line. And I could maybe hold him back at least until we pit. Of course, there's always the danger. Anytime you start fighting for a spot, Run some risks. I think it's going to depend on just how much better his tires are than mine once he gets here. Cause he's catching pretty quick, so I might not have much of a choice. I'll give it to you this corner. I'll stay. Might get blow by me. Maybe I'll uh, be giving him some dirty air. Maybe he'll slow down once he gets right behind me. Not sure how much air is going to matter at Rockingham, but you never know. This car is already trending tight. Even just a little bit tighter there could cause issues for him, especially if he wants to try to pass. Which is going to have to be low. So I'm not moving up off this high line. Unless, of course, he gets a nose there, obviously. A little bit loose, I cut a little bit lower than I wanted to out of the exit. I 
keep seeing a little bit of smoke. Still no caution yet, though. Oh, did he, he pit? Wow, okay. He's really going not only for halfway, but for a, a tiny bit of an undercut. That could pay off huge for him. Especially because I don't think I'm going to be that brave. Even if they haven't wrecked yet, you could easily get someone wrecking while trying to do pit entry, because it's a bit difficult here. You could definitely end up spinning, or, you know, when guys get on their fresh tires. Very treacherous entering these corners when the tires are cold, especially when you get used to when the car's tight like it is right now for me. But if that pays off for them, that's going to be huge. It's going to get a ton of time. Coming up on halfway here. Yeah, more guys uh, going in. Obviously, I'll head in if uh, if everybody goes in. Now you got guys going real fast around the track and some maybe unpredictable lap cars leading to some potentially predictable results, ironically. The lap time was 25.5. More guys taking the plunge. Coming up on lap traffic here. Maybe we come in just so we don't deal with this lap traffic. That was at 25.5. Oh, this is a really bad place to catch this dude. Hey. Okay, he goes low. Inside. Clear. Low car up high. Come on. Go low. Fuck. Lost the time there, and there's a caution because he stops. That's why I did not pick up. What the fuck is wrong with you? Alright. I think anybody that pits is going to be a lap down, so we should still be in the lead after pitting here. Exactly what I needed. Catch the pace car. Come on. Gift. Thank you. All right, everything's set as it's supposed to. Yeah, looks like it. Coming in this lap, it looks like. Can't pass the pace car. Look out for the pit speed limit. Pit lane speed limit is 40 miles per hour. All right. Okay, Colton, we'll fuel you to the end of the race. Burkhart, Let's just make sure we're giving it a full tank, even if we might not need it. I like having that extra weight to get the car turning. Pit box team that's how it works. Five, three, two, one. Right here. And stop. Right. 5380, or 58, not 85. That would be the dyslexic way to look at that. Not too bad. A little bit on the right front, so I could have been a little nicer. Go, go, go! That dumb car. They want you in single file. Not the worst though. I think the four was involved in that in some way. Sounds like. Now I'm a lap down. Where are we going here? You get way down. Letter fourteen. Carbine. Right here. Between the nine and the fourteen. We got guys taking wave arounds. The leader, Rosser, is pitting. Let's see here. So we got brand new tires. The guy behind us, he's staying out, even though he's got about I don't know, five, four or five laps on his tires. Oh, that was a nice long run. That was fun. Hopefully this doesn't devolve. Now that we've got a caution. And guys uh, hold it together. Hopefully I can hold it together. It's difficult on the cold tires. Do we do second gear or first gear? 
Friskier. I don't know, man. I kind of like it. There's a lot of room there. But you can also kind of catch him off guard if you start gassing up out of second gear, and you can kind of floor it a bit harder. I think we do the. I think we do first gear. I think that's what I'm going to go with. One to go. Next time by. I mean, our initial start was quite good. At the end of this lap. The guy waited until green. These guys will get the wave around. We better get going. Pretty short track here. The two is on the same tires as us on the outside there. Okay. Okay, so the guy that was behind us, he did pit, I think. It's interesting. So we're on even playing field with those guys. Alright, I don't know why they disabled the uh, restart zones, by the way, but I noticed they haven't had them. Be careful. Behind, I think, uh, qualified a little bit further back, but he's a highly rated driver. He's the number two car, so he might be looking for track position right now and might, might be uh, trying to get around me. To watch out for that. I don't know if I necessarily want to fight him off. In fact, I don't think I want to. So if he goes for it, I think I'm just going to let him have it and then focus on my tire saving. But it would be nice to hold on to the track position, that's for sure. No immediate wreck. Just kind of worried we'd get that, but everyone's doing really well this race. Whatever happened looked like it was related to pit entry, which, like I said, is pretty difficult here. It's a bit of a tougher one. And we'll see exactly what happened in the incidents later. He's kind of just hanging out back there. He could very well keep up with us and uh, do better with his tires. Gonna have to watch out for that for sure. Hopefully, I'm doing an alright job. gap between him and the guy in third at least. You just done a twenty four point zero. It's close back there. Really trying to focus on hitting my marks. Not uh, driving in too hard. Putting a bunch of heat in the right front. 
patient through the center because I think you can still carry too much speed through the center and hurt the right front as well. You've just done that 24.1. And once it kind of catches, get it on the right rear a little bit if I can. That's the uh, that's the plan anyway. Not sure how well it's working. It's working relative to third place at least. Can't quite shake P2 though. He's hanging in there. And maybe even peeking out below me, thinking about it. So about 36 laps or so I think to go. Now if he wanted, he could run the high line for one corner, get a huge run and overtake me. I don't doubt he could do that if he wanted. So he's definitely just riding right now. Okay, Maybe Colton, trying to get me to overdrive it so that way I, uh, he has the better tires later by putting the pressure on me. But I gotta remain disciplined and make sure I'm hitting my marks. Or else that's exactly what's going to happen. Got to think about how I'm driving, not worry about him too much. Not Except to make sure he's not uh, getting alongside me or anything. So far so good. I feel like I've hit some consistent laps, whether they're good laps or not. Good consistent and good uh, not killing my tires. I don't know. But whatever thing I am trying to do, I feel like I've been doing the same thing every lap, so hopefully it's a good thing. A little slower that lap though. I think I uh, underutilized my brake pedal that particular lap. He's about 0.2 behind, still just right there. Got about four seconds back to third. Really like to win this race. But having a, essentially a top two looking like it's locked in if nothing goes wrong is very nice. That traffic coming up. Have to be smart about how we go about this. He's looking like he prefers that lower line, so we might have to just take it high looks like it's going to be turns one and two are where we have to do that inside clear Wow. All right, that worked out just fine. Appreciate it, Scott. Two gets by just fine too, though. You've just done it. Twenty-four point six. I definitely see him in my mirror. It's so difficult not to uh, see someone back there and start overdriving the corners. Every instinct makes you want to get away, drive away from him, 
but if I do that, it's just going to be me driving too hard. And even if I might get away from him for a minute, he'll come past me later. So I've really just got to stay focused on what I'm doing. Was that a little smoke I see? Twenty-four point seven. Lap cars having some trouble, maybe racing side by side up ahead. What I hope most right now is that uh, the guy behind will have driven too hard trying to keep up with me or something, and then I'll start slowly creeping away. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that's my uh, best case scenario, I think. Finding out that I was actually doing better with my tires, but that's a rare occurrence for me. So, I'm not going to lean on that. Car is getting tighter, slowly but surely getting tighter. You've just done it. Just gotta react to it and slow down a little bit more, maybe. Just doing a little bit of a link back there. Okay, how are we going to get around a lap car this time? Okay, he's going to go low. Clear inside. Everyone's been pretty consistent when moving low, so it seems like a safe bet to assume that's where they're gonna go. I think that's probably the best way to do it here, Rockingham. So the fastest line probably is that high line. It's going for it. I, at this point in the race, I don't think I want to give up the track position. We're too close to the end for that. So, that lap time was if he starts zero. threatening, I think I'm going to try to hold him off. Can't let him get to my outside either, though. Uh -oh. That felt really tight. That was really bad on the right front, actually. I might have to move up the track anyway, just like I did that initial first run. Initial and first mean the same thing, so I don't know why I said both, but... <laughs> Earlier, I had to move up as the car got tight anyway, so maybe that's just where I'm going to go. Wow. 17 to go. How much tire has he saved compared to me? We're gonna find out. Can't tell if he's just patiently waiting for his chance, letting me use my tires right now, or if he's going for it too, and he's that, that's just all he's got. I'm not sure which is the case. Definitely not uh, 
the easy calming drive I had <laughs> earlier though that I was talking about. We have some pressure this time around. Taking a look at third place, they're still back four seconds, so they would have to make quite the charge to make all that back. Gotta avoid any mistakes, too. Can't hit the wall. Even if the car really wants to, can't do it. Twelve to go. And I'm really having to slow down in one and two. I just think it'll be really tough for him to pass me, even if uh, he does make a move. I think as long as I've got this outside, the rounds I'm going to get off the corner are going to be really tough to overcome for him to clear me. So I'm going to have to really watch my outside here and not let him get there. I assume he knows as well that it's going to be hard, unless he does like a slide job move. Even then, I can try to overcome that by a crossover. He looks like he's ready to try racing soon. Alright. It'd also be bad if he gets to my inside, like through turn two or something, because if I can't cut down, that's a dangerous place to be stuck on the outside of. I've got to think about that too and prepare if I need to react to that. Eight to go. He may make me look like a fool if he's been saving his tire this entire time and they just blow by me on the last lap or something. If that's what he does, then credit to him. That would be perfect execution. I'm not so sure he's going to be able to pull that off. Third place has caught us a little bit, but too little too late, I think, for him. The lap time was at 25.4. That's good consistency, keep it up. And we got a pretty good run on us there. Oh, the car's tight. Yikes. Five left to go. Five to go. We're in podium position. We are in fact in podium position. That is technically the truth. Inside. Nearly Clear down inside. there. That's what I was worried about. Be very careful. Yeah. It's going to be really hard for him to make that move. He looks like he's trying to look low. Looks like that's about as far as he can take it. He's kind of poking his nose down there in turn two. Oh, he's close though. I feel like he could definitely end up trying to make a slide job move or something. Desperation last lap move. 
If it's going to happen, it's coming soon because we are now two to go. You've got two left to go. Come on, Colton. Two laps left. You're P1. Sure, I don't cut down on him. White flag. Nice flag. flag. Got about two tenths on him. Starting the lap. One more lap for the win. Come on. That's good consistency. Not there, so I can take my line. Should get a little loose there. That was a little scary. The outside. He'll nearly get his nose there, but we will hold on to that outside line and get it done. All right. Well done, mate. Woo. You made them all look silly today. You won. All right. Okay, well. Thanks, good race. Lots of fun green laps there. That was good. All right. Sweet. Appreciate the two. Keeping Keep it clean. Good. Make sure. Yeah, good win, good race. That was fun. Good race. In case uh, he doesn't hear voice chat, make sure he knows. Good race. So, <laughs> we definitely hurt the right front there. Um, that was just me doing what I needed to do, holding that outside line. Pushing it a little harder. And uh, thankfully able to get it done. Glad I didn't give up that track position, because I feel like I would have been the one unable to pass later. If I had just let him go by or something. Uh, who knows, but all right, the old OSR setup gets it done, even without uh, <laughs> any adjustments, but uh, I think uh, maybe one of those Monday night fields or something, I probably would have been smoked, so going to have to learn how to adjust these setups. I don't know uh, how much, I don't know what I would change with that one, though. Maybe a little bit looser, I guess. But it was pretty sketchy early on, so tough for me to even want to say that. But lap five, got a wall hit here, it looks like, from the seven. Oh, he bounces it off, too. That could have been a wreck. Holds it together, though. At least until later in the lap, apparently. Struggling a little bit. Fifteen, bad angle in the corner. Whoa! Everyone's all right. 13 heads in a little bit hard. Gets the wall. Skip ahead a little bit. Oh, he might have been one of the lap cars I saw ahead of me really struggling. These cars really get wiggly on the straightaways, especially if uh, kind of get off pace and stuff. You get like some tire spin feeling. So we'll continue skipping ahead past some of these wall hits and such. This is P2, so this is interesting. They get some wall on exit, helping us pad out our lead there at the time. So 11, some more wall hit. We'll keep moving. What else we got? We got some cloud cover at this point in the race, it looks like. I don't even know if I noticed that when I was racing. <laughs> Probably should have, though. It's clearly much darker. Oh, wow, wow, whoa! Oh, dang, that sucks. This wasn't a caution either, because he's down below the apron. That really sucks, because this is the guy that, uh, I think he qualified P3. Yeah, he was the guy that was the 500 I rating guy. I was kind of rooting for him, because he had a heck of a qualifying run. But, uh, I guess the wear and tire has got to be a bit too much. Eventually he lost it. So that's too bad. Well, other guys caught up in it as well, or at least the 13 was, and he's having trouble getting going. Moving along, we are on lap 45 at this point. Just a little bit of blinking. Moving it on ahead. Too wide through turn two. Is this bad? Bad for the 13, bad for the 10. It's probably a couple of 4Xs there. 
13 looks like he has quit and uh, no longer cares what he's doing. He's... What is he doing? Stopping on the track. <laughs> if you want to give him a raise, at least go in the pits. Like, it looks like he hits the wall and he's frustrated, so now he's just flinging the wheel around. I don't know what he's up to, but he ends up running into somebody, which I would not be very happy about, and then affecting the race by causing a caution, so that looks like a kid, probably. Kind of like the immature response to rage quitting and then not even bothering to uh, be smart about it so it doesn't affect other people's race. Pretty selfish. It kind of comes across as maybe that's like a younger kid or something. But we go green again. And, uh, it was just the one caution, wasn't it? Pretty awesome race, really. Fortunately, we didn't get to do a green flag pit stop, because I had been out the whole time before the caution. That's alright. One less thing I had to mess up. Got plenty more wall hits to see, it looks like, although we are all the way to lap 99 at this point. Twelve's gonna hit the wall, he's a little bit too high up the track. Someone right behind the nine. Are they going to make contact? Nope, they're fine. Hey, and that was it. So, uh, second half of the race, very clean. Um, and a clean race overall, really, for a single split, especially. Excuse me. We will get the win and uh, hold off the two. I would be interested to see what the two's tires were. If he had better tires and just maybe couldn't quite get enough out of them to make, like, a pass. I can see that being the case. Um, I will try to bring up the race results. Did this work? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Hopefully that wasn't up the whole time. That would be very embarrassing. And you will not see this if, that, <laughs> if it was, because that would just be blocking the screen the whole time. But... You can see here, we get 22 I rating. We are at 5680 now. And uh, with the 0x, we will keep our 499. 114 championship points. So not too many because it was a, only a 1894 strength of field. But we do get the win and lead all but eight of the laps. So that's pretty darn cool. I think it was the initial eight that the 10 car led. And he'll get a solid sixth place finish himself. And uh, I think that's about it for what we have to look at. Who got the fastest lap? Let's see, 23,877. Hey, I think we got it. Sweet. All right, so even with uh, not really trying to hit fast laps, got that as well. Cool stuff, all right. So I'll go ahead and close out of that. I wonder if that was blocking the screen the whole time. I'm paranoid about that now. Hopefully it wasn't, but uh, that will do it for this one. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Have a good one.